when it came to adding color i really tried to let the height maps do most of the work but for the actual gradient maps themselves which i've used to add color to the different elements i tried to keep all of the gradients very very soft um so if we take a look here for uh, the stones for example i'm using the output from the tile sampler plugging that straight into a gradient map and here i've actually just left it stock i wanted my stones to be gray but if we zoom in here we can see we still have a lot of nice detail in the color itself so we've got these nice edges up here followed by a shadow same thing all the way down i found when working with stylized materials or even when working in non-stylized things if you exaggerate the highlights a bit it will come out stylized so that's something i've tried to emulate here so even if we look at the gradient map itself we can see all of these little ridges creating different planes and creating highlights throughout for the bullets we mentioned earlier that i had two slope blurs here so for the height itself i didn't want that big of a details in the bullet casings i wanted them to just be a little dense but for the gradient map and the color i wanted it to be a bit more exaggerated so that's what the second slope blur up here is for i've gotten all these really harsh edges i've created this much more visual interest so that when i go to add the gradient map you can see here i've still gone with the pretty soft gradient it just gradually changes color over time but if we zoom in you'll start to see all these dents really come to life so you can see here at the top highlight you can see how it just skirts around some softer bits it just creates a bit more visual interest and you can see it here on the material itself how that little dent is just exaggerated a bit more because of this color map for the sand uh, things take a little bit of a turn but not too far so again we start off with our soft gradient map i've used HSL afterwards to give me a bit of control on changing the saturation and the lightness it just makes it easier than going back and changing these individual little points uh, I can just control it as a whole here but what you see up on top here this is used with our exposed parameters what this is is it lets me in substance painter or marmoset or wherever I want to export this material to it allows me to adjust the highlight that goes on top so if we follow this note back we can see it comes out before we added the great little individual grains of sand so all of this little detail and this surface noise isn't going to be uh, visible on this map so we've gone out from the one before here into a normal note and this is just going to start bringing out the ridges on top plugging that into curvature so we get black and white pushing it through a blur to soften it a bit and then leveled in a histogram scan to give us these really sharp highlights so this is the top ridges on all of the um the sand dunes what we do with this is we plug into a contrast luminosity node now you can see here that both of these are exposed parameters so if i click and i go down and i look at my parameters i can see i have two things here i've got sand highlight contrast and sand highlight luminosity so what this gives me is it gives me the ability to exaggerate this highlight on top right now it seems okay even with, without this highlight on at all but if we just start pushing this value up a bit you'll start to see it just starts picking these highlights out so i wanted that level of control in other software which is why it's exposed but i just found this is a nice it's a nice and it's actually doesn't take that long to set up it's a nice way of getting these highlights in and giving you a bit more control in other programs when it comes to blending all of these different color maps together i've just used blend nodes and then i've utilized as i said earlier the height mask output from the height blend nodes that just makes it very very simple to blend all these together i put the sand in the background i put the mask in the opacity mask in the opacity uh, input and then i take the color from each of them so the stones goes to the stones input again you can see my frames here showing you which blend node is for which so teal that's the stones and if we follow it up then you can see it as well so that's going in there with the mask from the height blend for the stones 
Same thing with the bullets. So you can see the bullets here, taken from the color map up here. And the same with the horseshoes, taken from the color map here. And all of that is just then plugged straight into our input. When it comes to exposed parameters, you want to be thinking about the different ways you could use the material. So for me, I wanted to be able to use this material in a uh, shooting gallery style environment. So the ability to add lots of these bullet casings was really important. To do that, I exposed one of the parameters. So you can see over here, I've got a bullets bullet mask. So if I start bringing that down, I'm gonna see lots and lots of bullets start appearing on it. And the way that works is that if I have a look at the tile generator over here under the bullets, and I scroll down, this is random mask. You can go down here and click on this little icon. And suddenly you've got all these options. So this is where if you didn't have it exposed, you'd get the option to expose. Otherwise you can just assign it a property. So for me, I have the bullets mask property here. So I can just assign that and suddenly it's assigned to everything. Now, one of the issues with having two child generators is, is that if this changes, this doesn't necessarily change either, which would throw off the color map in this instance. So what I've done is I've actually set this to be the same value. So I can go down here and go to bullets mask. I set it to that. It sets it to the same value. Another thing I wanted to be able to do is change the amount of stones that are visible. So I've done the same thing with the mask. So again, if I go over here, I can bring down this mask value and suddenly there's way more stones. But I just wanted to be able to change the total number of stones. So this is just hiding and showing some of the stones. I want to be actually to change the amount of them. So we have a look at the tile sampler for the stones. We can see up here, I've got two different values. I've got the X amount and I've got the Y amount. Now, if I expose one of these, I ran into issues trying to assign it to the previous one. So what I did was I double clicked and I just add a new parameter out here. And this needs to be an integer. I can give this a, I can give this a name and call it stones. Stones number. I could go back to the tile sampler and then I could change this X amount from stones amount to stones number and change the Y amount from stones amount to stones number. And suddenly I've got control of the stones now using this new parameter. So if I change this, I bring this up all the way, you start to see them, change the amount of them. Now I've already got one of these set up called stones amount, which does this for me. So you can set the default, the min and the max values here. You can just play around with these numbers to find what's right for you. So let's set this back. Stones, stones amount, stones, stones amount. Perfect. Uh, finally, I wanted to be able to adjust the actual look of the sand itself. So I want to be able to change the sand pattern dynamically in whatever I was, whatever program I was using. So to do that, I go all the way back to the splatter node, right back to the very beginning. And I looked at this value, the grid number. So that's the number of these polygon two nodes that are displayed across here. So by tying that to an exposed parameter, if I go to sand type and I start changing this, you notice the entire sand pattern completely changes and suddenly we have something new. Now when combining this parameter here, with the highlight that we looked at earlier in our color section, this becomes much more powerful. So if we start cranking that highlight up, we're gonna start getting those edges. And then we have a completely different looking material. Let's change that back to three. So with all that covered, I think we've come to the end of this breakdown. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, if you made it this far. Um, I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. 
or feel free to send me a message directly at on, on um, artstation at artstation.com slash mark t underscore h uh thanks for watching